Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Edge Sports Network. We've got another interview for you guys today, part of our summer series of interviews. We've got Seneca Knight, San Jose State men's basketball. He is a guard there. Seneca, thanks so much for joining us here on the site today. It's great to have you on. Oh, uh, yeah, of course. No problem. I'm glad to be on. Glad to have you on. Uh, really looking forward to this one. I know you're coming off an unbelievable sophomore season with the program here. Uh, you averaged 17 points per game, six rebounds, two assists, shot the ball at 40% as well. Um, so I have to ask you, I mean, you made a huge jump from your freshman season. What kind of went into this past off season to make that significant of a jump? Uh, Really nothing, just working hard each and mm -hmm. every day. I know what my goal is, my end goal is, and also I wanted to win this season. Mm -hmm. So I tried to do everything that I could possibly can mm -hmm. to lead us to some W's this year. For sure, yeah. I mean, you made this this huge jump. It's pretty rare to see um, a jump like that going from your first year of college basketball to your second. You don't really see that across the NCAA a lot. And I mean, how have you kind of felt in this program your first two seasons? How have you felt like team chemistry-wise and just making the transition from high school to college? Um, team chemistry-wise, it was completely different. You know, coming in, it's not normal for us to have 10, 10 new guys coming in my freshman year. Mm -hmm. so chemistry wasn't really there and everything we had a lot of ups and downs and then this year we kind of got to gel a little bit but we have a lot of young guys I, me included because I was a sophomore last year so mm -hmm. we, there's a whole lot of young guys out there playing without really veteran experience mm -hmm. so um just being able to take that under my wing and just learn from it and everything so I think moving forward it'll help us a lot mm -hmm. and then uh the jump from high school to college I would just say probably the pace Mm -hmm. You know, just the game's a little bit faster. The people are stronger. Mm -hmm. So that's been definitely one of my main focuses from my freshman year, my sophomore year, just getting stronger. No yeah. doubt, no doubt. I know, you know, in that freshman season, too, you played in 31 games as a freshman. Uh, it's not something you see, you know, from every guy coming in their first year, getting that amount of play time. How did that kind of help yeah. you gain the confidence for this past season? And when you're in your first year of college, what are you kind of focusing on? Like, what parts of your game are you really trying to improve and get, you know, adjusted to that college level? Um, just trying to let everything flow naturally and everything. Mm -hmm. So going out there playing my freshman year, just trying to figure out what works, what doesn't work, what I need to improve on, what I uh, what I got now and just need to uh, become elite at. And just mm -hmm. trying to figure out that balance and everything because the college level is completely different from high school. The guys taller, they bigger, they faster. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just trying to get that experience underneath my belt. So, Playing in all 31 games my freshman year definitely helped. Mm -hmm. My coach believed in me. And um, just being able to get the experience from each game, from traveling on the road to playing at home, mm -hmm. uh, it was just a great learning experience. And me and him have a lot of talks about just everything basketball-related. Mm -hmm. And it just helped me grow as a player coming into this year and then next year. Yeah, I mean, you seem to use that first year as kind of a – you know, I wouldn't say a test year, but a good year to, you know, figure things out and you use it to jump off um, in your sophomore season. I know this past year you had over 30 points in three games and to even have a 30 point game in college basketball, pretty impressive to do it as a sophomore makes it all the more impressive. How do you kind of get in a zone like that, uh, you know, on this division one level uh, when you're out there, I mean, is it pregame preparation or just something you kind of have to figure out during the game? I mean, what do you kind of do to get in a zone like that? Uh, it just a lot. It's pre a lot of pregame preparation. Mm -hmm. uh, I try to make sure I take my ice baths. You know, recovery is a huge thing that I'm focused on. So mm -hmm. ice baths, go to the training room every day, even if I'm not injured or have any pain or anything, just get that treatment. Mm -hmm. um, get the shots before practice. I'll get about 500 shots before practice. Wow. And then I'll shoot free throws with my one of my assistant coaches, Tim Marion, after mm -hmm. practice. So just living in the gym, just having fun, enjoying what you do. And then when it comes to the game, just the confidence is there. The coach already mm -hmm. believes in me. And just having that confidence and knowing that my teammates have my back and the coaches believe in me. And it just helps me just play. I just let it come. If I drop 30, if I drop 20, I'm just trying to get a win at the end of the day. And I know my teammates have my back. For sure. I know. I mean, you, you're putting in that work, you know, on on the off days, days where you don't have a game. And then when you have that game, clearly it's all shown. And I know you get so much play time now. I mean, this past year, 31 games, 32 minutes a game. Going back to this kind of point where you've been consistent. Um, I mean, when you're playing that much night in and night out, 
how do you kind of keep the stamina throughout the course of a season? I know you're huge on recovery, as you mentioned. So in addition to the recovery, what's kind of the key to being able to, you know, just stay on pace the entire year in a college basketball season that can definitely be very taxing on the body? Um, You know, just staying locked into what you do. I don't really do any extra stuff. I don't really go out too much. So mm-hmm. during my downtime, I just like to chill and relax and rest. And also just find that extra that extra gear mm-hmm. to push you forward even on days you don't feel like doing stuff or when you're tired. Mm-hmm. I just love basketball and everything about it. I mean, I just started playing like my junior year of high school, really like constructive basketball. So mm-hmm. I just I just fell in love with it. So I've been playing like four years. So I just embrace every moment, to be honest. For sure. That's the best way to do it right there. And I know you've, you know, fully embraced your role at San Jose State so far. I, this is my favorite question of the interview right here. Um, I mean, what kind of made you choose San Jose State? I mean, I know the college decision is such a unique one. So many factors can go into it. So what kind of led you um, out to the West Coast? I know you're from Louisiana. Um, so what went into your college decision? And can you walk us through the process a little bit? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, t- to be honest, uh, San Jose State was really my only D1 offer out mm-hmm. of the whole nation. That's my only D1 offer, and I wanted to go D1. I had some JUCO interest. I, mm-hmm. I had, I think I had an offer from, like, every single level, like JUCO, NAIA, D2. Wow. And nothing wrong with those programs or anything, but I just knew, like, I wanted to go D1. That was my whole goal. And San Jose State, to be honest, they came in in May. So at the end of my senior year, they came in at, like, the end of April. and May, I had my first visit, wow. and I committed on my visit. They had to be up here on the May 22nd or 28th or something like that. Mm-hmm. So... Yeah, that was my only offer, so it wasn't really any other option. Me and my parents talked about it while we was out here on the visit, and we just like we didn't have nowhere else to go. Mm-hmm. The coach must have seen something in me, so why not? <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I'd say I'd say you made a good decision right now. I think you're doing uh, pretty well for the program. I'm sure they're pretty happy, pretty happy with that. And, and thank you. Yeah, of course. And I know you know. Yeah, you mentioned a great point. You had offers from kind of every level possible. You know, you could definitely go that JUCO route, see yourself in a D1 program a couple years down the road, a little bit of a journey. I know a lot of guys have done that, but you go right into Division One basketball right out of the gate, and it's worked well for you so far. Um, you know, you go to a whole other region of the country, too. I noticed that there is a lot of different styles of play in every region of the country. <laughs> what kind of things have you noticed on the West Coast as opposed to Louisiana, and have there been any similarities, too, that you've kind of experienced? Um, it's it's kind of a different ball game, the West Coast, and being in the South and Louisiana. Down in the South and Louisiana, it's kind of like more physical and then like bang bang, like mm-hmm. get to the basket, download, like contact and stuff. Out here, it's more like a laid back finesse type of game. Mm-hmm. So I just been trying to incorporate that this off season, just working more and being like, it's more pace out here in the West Coast mm-hmm. instead of just fast, fast, fast in uh, the South. Mm-hmm. So just incorporate into the game from the south and then the game from out here just i feel like open up opens up my overall game mm-hmm. because then i'm able to do both so when i get hit out here it's nothing mm-hmm. so when i go back home and play then I, I work on the stuff that i've been learning out there and it's totally different they don't see it before so for sure just trying to incorporate both of those things into my game to just grow as an overall player just keep mm-hmm. learning and working I think you got the best of both worlds right there. And I, I mean, you're playing, you know, yeah, playing in both regions like that. I mean, it gives you different elements of your game that you can kind of use wherever you, you know, end up playing and being in a D1 program, you're traveling all over the country playing these teams everywhere. So you definitely have, I'd say a little bit of an advantage over some of these guys who have maybe stayed, you know, locally and just played in in one part of the country their entire lives. So going far away um, definitely can help. Is, was that kind of the first time that you went far away from home or had you spent any time, you know, in any other parts of the country? Uh, I traveled a lot, but it was never on my own. So I mm-hmm. traveled with my parents and everything. Uh, I didn't really play AAU. I, none, like, throughout high school, I didn't really play AAU at all. Mm-hmm. So just me and my parents would take road trips, though, and stuff like that. So traveling always been fun to me. Mm-hmm. But I never traveled like this far by myself. Mm-hmm. But it been it been a, a cool experience. Oh, for sure, yeah. For sure. I mean, it's always great to get around, and that's kind of the best part about college, too, just kind of getting to experience uh, a different part of the country because, you know, we're based out of Massachusetts right now. Um, You know, our site's based central Massachusetts, about an hour outside from Boston. I ended up going out to Milwaukee for college at Marquette, 
So I totally understand, you know, getting out of the comfort zone, getting to a new part of the country. I mean, you, you, I think you made the better decision weather wise. You got that gorgeous California weather. Yeah. I mean, you got that gorgeous California weather. I'm out in like negative 30 degree snow, wind. It's terrible. It's terrible. I might have to make my way up to California. I don't know. Um, yeah, you have to. I know. It seems great. Yeah. What do you like about California the most? Cause it's been weird. We've actually had like three or four guys on the site over the past week that are either going to college in California or they're from California. What have you kind of liked about it the most? Uh, I love the weather. I love mm-hmm. the beaches. Just being outside and walking, just a pretty sight. Mm-hmm. And uh, I love palm trees. That's mm-hmm. one of my favorite trees since I was little. So being able to come out here, we got palm trees all over our campus. Oh, yeah. I like going to take strolls, especially at night when it's kind of chilly. Uh-huh. So it's not really hot because in Louisiana, it's humid. Oh, yeah. But being out here, it's pretty, like, cool. You can put a hoodie and some sweats on and just go walk around campus, have a beautiful night and everything. Man, that sounds so nice. I like. I really do have <laughs> to get out there. I really do have to get out there. Um, I know, it's yeah, the atmosphere. Oh, yeah. I know the atmosphere just must be great out there. And, I mean, how's San Jose sure. State, too? I mean, that community, um, you guys seem to have a pretty good fan base and stuff. So how's it been, you know, attending the school, being able to put on the jersey, you know, every year and just – playing in front of those fans uh i love it i enjoy it my freshman year we didn't have really much of a fan base and then our fan base started growing mm-hmm. so, uh, my sophomore season um i love getting involved with the students and everybody i love attending other sport games mm-hmm. and we trying to make it a family trying to change the culture of san jose state from mm-hmm. uh, the previous years and try to make it more of a family type of atmosphere from all the sports and just everybody on campus just feel welcome for sure for sure, I know. And then we have the statues on campus too. You know, with everything going on and just uh-huh. being a part of that is just, it just couldn't ask for nothing more. Exactly. I mean, you're in a good spot right now out there, and I mean, you've definitely played a role in growing that community and building that family atmosphere for sure. So it's definitely going to be interesting to see what you guys do down the road here. I know you're entering your junior yeah. season now. I'm sure you're really looking forward to that. Um, yeah. So, yeah. So I mean. I'm sure you're eager to play um, this year with right. every, you know, pandemic that's been going on and just everything. It's been a 2020 has been a crazy year, safe to say. So oh, crazy. it has. Oh, my God. It's been a crazy year from day one. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm ready for 2021. I don't know about you, but I'm ready for 2021. Yeah. Um, yeah. It can't be this bad. It can't exactly. I mean, it can be bad, but it can't be this bad. That's the thing. That's yeah, it can't get this bad. Ever. Exactly. I I hope it can't. I mean, let, we got to be careful here. I mean, if we have a worse twenty twenty one, I don't know. The world will be over. I think. I think that'll be it. So, um, it's okay. Yeah. I know. Yeah, I think it'll be pretty pretty ugly if we do have a worse twenty twenty one. But headed into your junior year here, what are you looking forward to the most? I mean, what are some goals that you have for yourself and for this team? Um, I just want us to go out there and play hard each and every day. I know we can play mm-hmm. more games than we won this year, and I know we more than capable of doing that. So going out there, trying to make a push in the tournament, uh, trying to make a push in the Mount West tournament, because we've been put out the first round of the last two years in the Mount West tournament, and didn't mm-hmm. even have close of a chance to for the NCAA tournament. Mm-hmm. And that's always one of my goals. Cause I'm, I'm a winner, mm-hmm. and I'm competitive, so I really want to accomplish that and then just getting forward to knowing my teammates the new guys that we have coming in uh gelling with them being a leader for them mm-hmm. and uh just teaching them things that i wish i would have learned my freshman year because i had nobody else to look up to mm-hmm. so just helping them out from what i learned for sure and i know you know you're one of the going to be one of the older guys on this team now believe it or not i know first two years have probably flown by and it's probably seems really really quick but, I mean, what are you kind of looking forward to, as you mentioned, with helping these younger guys? Uh, how would you kind of describe your leadership style? And what kind of things are you going to try and focus on with these guys coming in so that they're ready to play this upcoming season and help you guys out as a program? Uh, I'm more of a leader by example. Mm-hmm. But going throughout the, and talking to my coaches and my parents and everything, just being more vocal. Mm-hmm. Working on being more vocal and expressing them because I know sometimes they're not, they not going to want to come up and talk to me about stuff. Mm-hmm. So just if I see something that they can improve on or see something that it might have been easier if they did differently and just teaching them like the little pointers of the game mm-hmm. and just the IQ, helping them raise the IQ, watch film, uh, that's really it. Mm-hmm. For sure. That's the best way to do it. Because, I mean, this is one thing, you know, words 
I mean, they can go far, but you really do have to lead by example. Um, you know, you can, you know, you can talk the talk, but can you walk the walk? So definitely leading by example, kind of the way to go for sure. And I'm sure that'll serve those younger guys, uh, you know, in a good way right there. I'd say you're a pretty good, pretty good role model, averaging 17 points per game. I think most guys would be pretty content doing that, uh, you know, in their first year, second year of college basketball. So, um, it'll definitely be fun to see what you guys do this upcoming season. Um, to, you know, kind of wrap up the interview here, I always like to end on a few, you know, fun questions and stuff, stuff kind of off the court. And then a question right at the end, we call it basically the million dollar question here. You might've thought about it. You might've not. Um, the first, you know, off the court question I have for you though, I know you've been involved in quite a bit of community service, um, you know, throughout your basketball career here and stuff. So for the people that don't really know what you've done with your community and stuff, can you go into uh, a few of the things that you've, you know, done in your time off the court to kind of help people out throughout, you know, wherever you may be in the country, because we know you've been all around now here. So what have you kind of been doing off the court just in your community? Um, since being back home, when uh when I was in high school, I'll go to the retirement home. Mm-hmm. We had this deaf, this deaf person, and I'll go there, talk with him. Well, not really talk, but learn sign language for him. Mm-hmm. We'll play dominoes, just spend time with him. And then throughout college, since I came to college, just going to, you know, just simple stuff, going to the um, school across the street, reading to the young children, mm-hmm. interacting with them. My mom runs a nonprofit organization with mm-hmm. children from zero to three. Mm-hmm. And just going there and hanging out with the little kids, just, you know, they zero to three, they don't really know who I am or this and that. But just mm-hmm. spending time hanging with them, helping my mom out. I used to go to the museum and volunteer with them. Just a variety of different things that's a lot mm-hmm, exactly. <laughs> i just love giving back and helping and helping people the way i didn't have help like that mm-hmm. growing up and just being the example to be like oh i'm doing something in college i'm playing well in college and then having somebody as a role model to look up to for the younger generation no matter where i'm at san jose new orleans last year just anywhere i think that's great i really do and um i always like to see you know guys like yourself using their platform in a great way and you're definitely doing that you know and it's really i think it's really good too because i've talked to a bunch of guys that have done community service all different forms you name it and uh you know mission trips community service like you've done they've done really really at all and i think one common theme that i find is like you go there to kind of help people out and stuff but in some ways in a lot of ways actually they kind of always help you you know you kind of get it you kind of get it right. back. So, I mean, through that community service, what kind of things have you kind of learned, you know, that you've maybe implemented on the court, but just kind of life in general? All right. Uh, the teamwork, you know, uh, talking, getting to know other people. Mm-hmm. Everybody comes from different backgrounds. You can't just instantly assume they know what you know or mm-hmm. I know what they know. And just being able to learn, each person always has some, some gift to offer or some knowledge to offer to to you and being able to learn from it. So, Mm-hmm. to take that on the court is be able to like if my teammates say something or see something then mm-hmm. be like and then listen to them because I could learn from it because mm-hmm. it's always something I don't know everything nobody knows everything so it's mm-hmm. always something you know just to get that extra advantage on the court or mm-hmm. just learn an extra piece of knowledge mm-hmm. that's fantastic getting that new perspective on things and uh just kind of exactly perfect yeah I mean always learning I mean you can really learn something new every day um, that's, exactly. that's kind of, yeah. So, I mean, that's kind of what, um, you know, as I get older now and stuff, I've, I'm starting to learn that too. And, and, uh, I'm sure you kind of feel the same way with things right there. Um, so yeah, definitely yeah. great what you're doing the, uh, for the community. Um, that's fantastic to see. And I'm glad that, um, you've been able to kind of connect with all these different people, both out in California, back home in Louisiana. Um, so that's fantastic exactly. to see. Definitely keep up the good work for sure. And, um, yeah. Yeah, for sure. And I always like to ask this, too. Uh, this is a second kind of fun question here. Um, what's a fun fact about you? You know, some people might not know if you, you don't say anything about it. But uh, if we were, like, taking a quiz on Seneca Knight and there was a there was a bonus question, I mean, what would that be? Uh, that's a good question. I never really put too much thought in that. <laughs> uh, I guess it would be that I love animals. Like, I'm huge. Like, I just love animals. I'll sit down mm-hmm. and watch National Geographic just all day for just cause. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> What's your let, let's go like top three favorite animals if you had to pick? 
All right. So Tiger, Tiger will be the first one. Mm-hmm. Um, I like Dolphins. Dolphins will be one of them. The second one, and then the third one. Um, I guess I have to say dogs. Like, who doesn't like dogs? I don't know. If you don't <laughs> like dogs, if you don't like dogs, it's a serious issue right there. Yeah, it's and, a problem. Uh, like, who doesn't like dogs? They the the most friendly creature. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I mean, you you can't not like dogs, and um, that's a good. That's a strong top three right there. Now that you said you like dogs, you got to be a dog person, right? Not a cat person. Yeah, I'm a dog person. All right. I don't like cats. I like big cats, like tigers, lions, yep. and stuff. But small cats, I can't deal with. Them. They're boring. <laughs> They're boring. I mean, They're boring. If, they just roam around all day. Exactly. If you were if you were a cat person, we actually couldn't post the interview. So I'm glad you're a dog person. Um, uh, thank God. I mean, yeah, we can't we can't be having any cat people on the site right here. It's just we can't do that. So. Um, yeah. Glad you're a dog yeah. person. I know, yeah, you can't do it, but uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, animals. National Geographic too. I mean, they they give you that stuff that you would not see like you know anywhere else. I mean, they they do right. some really good work there, and um, I know you know like the animal documentaries and stuff. I always know that I'd grow up like watching them in school, and and it, that always be the best day of the year when they pulled out one of those you know videos right there. Didn't have to do schoolwork. Yeah. Always got to see the animals and stuff. So, so enlightened. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I mean, again, hey, it goes back to, you know, you can learn a new thing every day. So exactly. get, getting things in the animal category right there. Um, but right. it's a good fun fact right there. If we ever do take that quiz on you, people got to remember that. And um, we'll have that pulled up there. So I know to close up here, the million dollar question. Um, this one, you might have thought about it. You might have not. Could be tough. I don't know. Um, very broad question, but if you could kind of describe basketball in one word or a phrase, like what basketball has meant to you, how would you describe it? Oh, uh, okay. Okay, I got to think on this one. Take your time. Take your time. Because I know it is a pretty tough question, and there's a lot of words out there to describe basketball, so no rush at all. Oh, uh, okay. Let's see. Mm-hmm. I'll have to say embracing. Mm-hmm. That's, That's a good one. Word, if I had to use one word. That's a good one. That's a good one. Just we embracing, have... you know, the goods, the bads, mm-hmm. everything that comes with it, getting the recovery, um, just everything, just embrace it all. Mm-hmm. I kind of, um, I think that's a great word just to kind of describe like the journey, you know, that you've been through and that basketball kind of brings, cause it brings you a bunch of different places you go through a bunch yeah. of different experiences. You have good games. You have bad games. You have, you know, tiring practices, late nights. You have everything. So I think um, that's just kind of great that you embrace the journey. And, um, you know, your journey is far from over here. I want to say, you know, congrats on a, a great sophomore season, great first two years in the program. And uh, we're definitely yeah, wishing. Appreciate that. Yeah, no problem at all. I mean, we're definitely wishing you nothing but the best. Um, for this upcoming season and your remaining time at San Jose State. And uh, Seneca, I mean, thanks so much for taking the time to join us on the site here today. It was great talking to you about your career on the court and off. And, uh, yeah, definitely great to have you on. We'd be glad to have you back. Yes, uh, looking forward to it. No problem at all. We'll make sure to put your Twitter down below so everyone can go follow your you know career journey here at San Jose State and beyond. And we'll also put a link to San Jose State's basketball website for any news and updates on the team. Um, but, guys, thanks so much for joining us here at Edge Sports Network today. Uh, it was great having you guys. Hope you guys enjoyed another interview. And, as always, we'll see you guys next time.